back to CBSA to see whether or not they actually requested okay. those re those documents. I, I'd like permission from the committee to uh, have those documents tabled to the committee. Um, Indigenous set aside, I previously told this committee how much yeah. I, can I, I, I can I interrupt for a sec, strategy. Mr. Johnson. I'll, I'll pause your time. Is this a request from the committee for an order of production of documents or a regular? Yes. Okay. Members, we're fine with that? Yes. No, I think were you, ask, were you asking Ms. Durgan or from Mr. Mills or just from for, for Mr. Department? Mills? He can make the request to CBSA and provide them to the committee. Okay. Um, That's I, I Mr. previously Jones. told. I previously told this committee how much I value the procurement strategy for Indigenous business, and I think we all should, and, and how critical Indigenous leadership and involvement in procurement is. It's something New Democrats have been fighting hard for, especially in procurement opp uh, opportunities that directly affect Indigenous communities. I want to make sure what's happening with these set-asides, but um, what I've heard, it doesn't seem like it is what's supposed to be. PSPC's rules for the program are rightly set up to make sure that work doesn't simply get subcontract to non-Indigenous entities. But when I asked Dalian about how they subcontract Indigenous set-aside contracts, I was appalled by their answers. They did not acknowledge the requirements for subcontractors to be Indigenous. In fact, Mr. Yao, um, you know, said the rules uh, allow us to hire pretty much whoever we want. He also told us that the Indigenous set-aside requirements are audited on every joint venture Dalian and Cordex do. Is it true that this has been audited on every joint venture they do? And is it true that uh, Indigenous Services Canada has audited the Butler work in particular, as Mr. Yao claimed? Yeah. We're out of time. Is it a quick yes or no, uh, Mr. Mills? It's a quick answer, um, Mr. President. That would you'd have to direct that question to Indigenous Services Canada, who administers that program. Okay. Mr. Brock, for five minutes, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Ms. Chan, does uh, PSPC have its own legal department? Um, thank you for the question, Mr. <clears throat> Chair. Uh, we consulted uh, with uh, Legal at Justice Canada. Okay, so no, no, nothing internal. You, you, do you have a particular lawyer that you deal with at the DOJ? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Uh, there, there's a reason why I asked you that. So I want to go through a thread of emails between yourself and Ritika Dutt. She brought to your attention on May 10th, 2023, a number of concerns that Corridex and Dalian were using their names as resources without their knowledge and consent and received payments from the government under the TA that during the bidding process, they falsely claimed that they had been in contact with Bottler and sought their input. Uh, an ATIP with CBSA confirmed that there was no fixation of status of personnel on file, that they in fact filed legal notice to the contractor to produce the document, and they failed to comply. They sought your help to compel the contractor to produce the document. There are elements of criminality in that email that not only is there potential breach of contract and regulations with respect to the TA, but we have elements of fraud and forgery. Did you get a sense that there was a red flag in this and whether or not you passed this on to the GOJ for consultation? Yes or no? Uh, we did pass along uh, what we found and we were in uh, constant call, um, consultation throughout the course of this investigation. Did you consult the DOJ in relation to that email? Uh, yes. You did? Did you get a legal opinion? Uh, yes. Okay. And the legal opinion, without getting into specifics, but allowed you to continue pursuing that documentation that they requested? Well, we have... Yes uh, or no? Well, we, our first and foremost priority was to protect Canada and to investigate whether or not were uh, if the allegations of fraud from the prime contractor uh, occurred. Yes. Okay. So you, you sent an email to Julie Prudham on May the 26th requesting information from the contract regarding the allegations. May 26th, you received a further email from uh, Bottler that they were never contracted by Cordex to provide any feedback on the TA, did not provide recommendations on any resources, that the mandatory requirements table for herself that was submitted with the TA significantly inflated her work experience and not reflective of her actual work experience. She did not agree or consent to be named on the TA or for the work to be implemented. Again, the specter of criminality. And now we have got the specter of a forged resume 
me. Another red flag. Did you send that particular email to the GOJ for consultation? Yes, I have. Okay. Now, we already know what the evidence was, okay? Christian Firth has testified in his illogical fantasy of simply making a mistake could have been believed if there was one modification to Ritika Dutt's resume. But memory serves me correct without looking at the transcript that he had attempted on at least five, if not six occasions to deliberately manipulate the work experience so that when they inputted that data on the required forms that they would qualify for funding. That is not only forgery, that is fraud. So my question to you is, why did you not just shut down immediately this operation between GC Strategies, Cordex, and Dalian against the specter of criminality? It's obvious. Was it not obvious to you? I'm not asking Mr. Mills. I'm asking Ms. Chan. Move. Um, all right. Thank you for the question, Mr. Chair. Um, Again, our priority was to protect, was to investigate the allegations made to Dalian or Karadix. When we asked Dalian to provide document and documentations that they did, they did receive, they did receive payments from CBSA, and they did pay out. As as we found out later, that they did, um, they were provided the resources from GC Strategies. Okay, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that. You have a specter now of fraudulent resumes. Did you go to GC Strategies? Did you go to Cordex and say, what is going on here? You are misleading the government. You are abusing taxpayer monies. Did you do that, Ms. Chan? Ms. Chan. Um, Very briefly, please. I... I, I, I analyze, I'm analyzing data, and from what we observe, was that Dalian Corotix were uh, obtained those documents from GC Strategies. What we found was that there was nothing out of the ordinary with um, the contractors. Thanks, Ms. Strand. Uh, Mr. Sousa, for five minutes, please. 